This podcast is brought to you by Monkey Nut Audiobooks. Creating audiobooks, podcasts and voiceovers that keep people listening. Welcome to the Reality of Christianity podcast, guys. This podcast is here to glorify God. It's all about people sharing their amazing stories about how they came to faith, uh, the ups and downs of what that looks like. And we are just talking about what life looks like for Christians. It really looks like for Christians day to day. And today I've got my guest, Stu, on the podcast. Welcome. Thank you. And Stu, what is it that you want to talk to us about today? I'm going to share the, the goodness of God in my life and what he's done for me, and how he's changed my life, and how he's set me free from addiction. So I'm going to, the, the topic is going to be addiction, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm going to try and uh, fit 23 years of addiction into the time we've got, and how he's set me mm-hmm. free. That's a tricky part, but you know what? It can be done. Yeah. So guys, this podcast is going to mainly be focused on the subject of addiction, and just showing you how God, uh, how Jesus can totally set you free. It still happens today. Yeah. And it's the power of God at work. And it is still working and it's healing people. Yeah. And it is setting them free from things that look impossible to yeah. heal. Um. So how do you want to begin? Were you always a Christian or how did that happen? Did you come to faith and when? Yeah, I was 14 years old and my mum started going to a small church in Totten, Southampton. Mm-hmm. And then which led us going to Victory Gospel Church, which is in North Baddersley at the time. And I was around 14 years old and I encountered Jesus at 14. Mm-hmm. Even though I was a young man, I, I knew that God was real. And uh, I I gave my life at 14. I spent two years on fire for God. I got involved in the church. I was working in in on a Sunday in the sound mm-hmm. and the lighting and... I was going to the youth groups on a fri- on a Friday. But at, at 14, I was very, very fortunate that God God blessed me with a gift. I was a very good footballer. Mm-hmm. So at, at the at the age of so from around the age of 10, my destiny was to be a professional footballer. Okay. So I didn't pay much attention to school. Okay. Like I maybe should have done. But I am... Um, I was fortunate enough that I got involved at professional football clubs and between 14 and 16 got to know Jesus, which led me. I lived, I lived a very privileged upbringing. I was very fortunate. My, you know, my parents um, worked very hard to g- give me a really good upbringing, very mm-hmm. grounded. My, I had two great parents, brothers and a sister. And uh, at 16, after being on fire for God, I was baptised you know, I, I knew God was real. How I, did you know God was real for you? I, I just had, I'd had encounters. I'd been prayed for. I'd felt what it, what it was like to, to feel the Holy Spirit inside of you. What does it feel like? It's, it's, you can, fi- it, it, you can feel him in your heart. Yeah. That's how I could explain it. It was the love that you felt from God mm-hmm. inside of you. That, and, and and when you get prayed for and, and you could feel that overwhelming presence that sometimes you understand why when people are getting prayed for that mm-hmm. they can't always even stay on their feet because mm-hmm. the presence is so strong. Mm-hmm. And and I had that. And and I had that fire inside of me as a young man. But at at the age of sixteen, I I got a football contract, so I, I knew I was leaving home to become a professional footballer mm-hmm. from school. And at 16, I completely turned my back on Jesus. Why? It was like I left home to go and live in Portsmouth. So I was from Southampton. So I'd signed for Mm -hmm. Southampton and Portsmouth. We've got a big rivalry. So I went and left where I was from to go and sign for Southampton's biggest rivals. And I just turned my back. I I, I just, the, 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 the devil, I opened the door to the devil. And I, and the minute you do that, the devil doesn't hesitate. He he comes he in. He straight in. Yes. How did you? How would you say you opened the door to the devil? Because I I walked out. I walked out of home. Got my mum and dad dropped me in Portsmouth, and and I just 
all the fundamentals that have been installed in me from going to the church and and and, and what God had called God had I'd already seen the miracles of what he was doing in my life with with the opportunities with football and stuff that he was he was delivering and the gift and the ability it gave me but mm-hmm. but I I don't really know what it was but at that time to put my finger on it but there was a, just a change I I I went to Portsmouth I I um I suddenly found nightclubs mm-hmm. at 16 years yeah, old. Yeah, as you do. Yeah, I found, I mean I should have you should have been 18 to even go in them. So well, I was yeah. already I'd already started breaking the law mm-hmm. and and doing those things. Um I had a great relationship with my dad who passed away a few years ago and mm-hmm. and growing up he enjoyed horse racing and greyhound racing and we shared a bond mm-hmm. that I used to go with him. Yeah. So I would go to the great. He used to own grounds, so I would I would go with him, and and I would I would see the racing of the horse racing in the grounds, and it, I enjoyed going. But and and I I didn't know a huge amount as a child about gambling, but very okay. quickly at about fourteen fifteen, yeah, I started noticing how you put money on and win money, yeah. And at sixteen, when I when when I when I left home. With the football, you only work for a couple of hours a day, mm-hmm. you know, in the morning. So you've got a lot of time to yourself. Yeah. So what I found is, is I found myself going to the betting shops mm-hmm. where where you, you know, you where you could, Lab Brooks, they're called, and different names. There's lots of different uh, shops. And now you started to go without your dad, just by yourself. Yeah, because yeah, I'd moved to Portsmouth. Yeah. And I believe that the addictions... And the illnesses, I believe they can be passed down through your family. You yeah, can get generational curses over that come through your parents and families onto your children. And it's learnt behaviour as well, I think. Yeah, 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 because that, that was a bond that we both liked. Yeah. So so as much as it caused a lot of problems, which I'm going to go on to share mm-hmm. about, it created a relationship between me and my dad. Mm-hmm. So so I I then backslid for 23 years of my life between 16 and 39 of and what which does I'm that mean share. if you if you backslid so backslid is what i what i more or less said uh, um a few moments ago is backslid is when you turn your back on jesus yeah where where i knew he was real but i shut the door on my heart and closed off my heart and didn't have it open to what the rest of my life would have looked like between 16 and 39 if I'd allowed him to be in it. I went and lived and did rap, did life my way mm-hmm. in the flesh. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't do anything in his strength. I, yeah. I did it all in my own. Okay. And that pretty much then went on to live a wrecked life. So between the so between the age of, of sort of 16 and, and 19, I... I I went and played professional football. I moved to Derby County, which mm-hmm. were a Premier League football team. And then I, I, I had many nights out in London, drink, you know, womanizing. Yeah. All, 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 the, all, the, all the temptations of the devil. Uh, gambling. Gambling was a daily thing for me. I, I wasn't happy until I wasn't on a huge amount of money okay. at the time. This is 25 years ago. Yeah. You know, it wasn't the same as it is now with no. football. And I... I I would go in into a betting shop at sort of half past 12, one o'clock, and I would leave at five o'clock and I wouldn't leave till I'd lost everything I had. Oh, my gosh. So Would even, you bet all your salary on, yeah, on all yeah, of it? Yeah, quite, quite easy. And then it was, what, what, what am I going to do now? And then at 19, I eventually got released. 1920, I was at the time. Uh I got released by a team called Bristol City. So mm-hmm. I moved to Bristol and I moved home. And then and then I, my my partner Natalie, I was that's my ex-wife, mm-hmm. at uh 20 year 20 year, 21 years old, uh we had our had our first first child, Chloe. <laughs> and I I gambled and drank. I I was a I was a social sort of drinker at the time you know liked too many nights out Mm -hmm. I carried on when I came back I got a job so I was a laborer on a building site for my dad he he was a property developer so I got I got a job with my dad and uh I 
I carried on uh, gambling and drinking, and we had a first child. And we, I had a I had a house. I was fortunate that uh, I could buy buy my own house. Yeah. And that got married at uh, twenty four, mm-hmm. but at twenty five, twenty six, the gambling. I used to go to work, and I earned okay money then. Mm-hmm. I was a. Uh, I've sort of. I created my own plumbing business, and the I the gambling was just tormenting me. I mean the tor the torment I brought upon my ex wife, and I'd had two children then through gambling and drinking. So you now had an addiction of gambling or oh. drinking or both. Or? Yeah, yeah. I was as I was the last twenty three years of that twenty three years is whether you're addicted to drugs, mm-hmm. pornography, yeah. gambling, drinking, I, any heroin addict, drug addict, cocaine. I, I was as bad yeah. in in the former gambling yeah. at the time. Mm-hmm. I, I I wouldn't say I was an alcoholic, mm-hmm. but I I drank a lot. I enjoyed a lot of social drinking nights mm-hmm. out. Did your wife realise you'd had an addiction at the time or not? Um, the thing with addiction is you end up hiding it from your loved yeah. ones. Yeah, and I would often, you know, she would think I was at work, mm-hmm. but. I was really on my way home, and I'd stop at the at the bet. I used to have a, a a betting office just a just a half a mile up the road from my house. Yeah. And at the time, I was probably on sort of five six hundred pound a week, and I mm-hmm. used to re- remember many times on a Friday, just been paid, and I would go in there and I'd lose all my wages, and I had two children wow. at home, and I had to provide for them. And so, how did you? How did she not notice? Because it led me. I ended up taking credit cards and yeah. loans to fill addiction. That's what happens, isn't it? Yeah. So so it's just, it's very similar to, you know, a drug, a drug addict that's looking for their next fix. Yeah. No matter what, how can yeah. they get it? Can yeah. they borrow money to get mm-hmm. it? Can, you know, I see a lot of people that steal to mm-hmm. be able to get the money and sell things mm-hmm. to buy drugs. And I continue to gamble, to gamble and I put my ex-wife through. So, you know, I, I had, I had great times with my two children two children at the time mm-hmm. we i'd give my children like most dads yeah. whatever you could give them yeah. you did but the means of what that i did it wasn't always morally correct i, yeah. I was in a scenario where i took loans and mm-hmm. i would draw the i'd take 10,000 pound mm-hmm. loans and mm-hmm. maybe gamble five of it 1000 and go and go and use the 5000 yeah. to continue living and and it was just a life of torment and my my ex-wife not knowing when i'm going to come home at night or if i'm going to come home yeah and and it led to, you know, I ended up, and and I can share this because when you give your life to Christ, you yeah. become a new creation. Yes. So that that was the old me. Yeah. Now I live in Christ. Yeah. So I'm quite comfortable to share these things. And that led that led to me putting her through a horrific time of of where I had an affair. Yeah. When I was around 27 years old. Mm-hmm. Um at, at, and the hurt that I installed in my two kids at the time, and I look back, and you know it's tough talking about. But what led you there? What led you to the affair and everything? So it's a knock-on effect. It's, yeah, it's the gambling Makes that leads sense. to the drinking, the nightclubs. You're in yeah. a nightclub, you 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 get carried away. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you you you, you, you then do, when when you when you've got addiction. And especially with drinking and drugs, you know, you're under the influence of a, of something else. It's it's not you, is it? You're no. allow- the minute you open that door to that drink, you're allowing the devil to step in, and yeah. then and then he, he's rubbing his hands together. Yeah. He's thinking, what can I cause a problem in his life tonight? You know, what can I go and do when he's out in this nightclub that's going to then affect him? You know, and 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 then, you know, God gives us our free will, and that's what I chose. Yeah. We we that we then actually went on. I went on to have another child with my ex wife Harry. But what it did in the end is, it led to to me and my ex wife getting divorced. How did that feel? Um, of course you lie to yourself, so you sort of try and put blame on your partner of why that might be partly her fault as yeah. well. Why we split and all that. Yeah. But it it you're was, in denial, bit, yeah, aren't you? yeah, yeah. It was it was in it was in the um. I, I was in denial, complete denial. Um, and then s- several years ago, I I met Liz, who's my current partner and, and wife. And What happened in between? 
um, after the divorce and your new relationship just what was just your com- life like just this? carried on the same. really yeah okay. yeah, yeah. Th- things had changed i mean i still had opportunities and i started work work with my family business mm-hmm. with my brother and my dad mm-hmm. and i was doing well financially yeah so i'd had a turn in my life of you know god c- continues to knock at your door yeah. you know he can continue that's the amazing to re- thing yeah. isn't it he don't, he don't go like, away it's yeah. just it's Who's just that good yeah you know, he, he, he's calling you back, but I kept the door shut. Yeah. And in life, if you, the in air, if you keep the door shut, I was, I was going to say that this was a bit later, but I think now is quite appropriate. Yeah. God cannot move in the areas of your life that you've got the door shut to Him in. People keep saying that to me. Yeah. yeah. He, 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 because God gave man free will. Mm-hmm. So. And and I kept a lot of doors shut, which I'll go on to share later. With um, yeah. So so um, Liz, who who I met several years ago, um, had no idea about my gambling problems when we met. Okay. So. How did you hide that from her? Well, in in those times, several years ago, that's when they sort of brought out that you could gamble on your phone. Okay. So there was a lot of moments when we were together when. We would be sat opposite each other like this in the in in the lounge, maybe watching TV, or mm-hmm. and I'd be as people think they scroll through your phone. I wasn't scrolling through my phone. I was I was I was gambling. Mm-hmm. And she and had no idea. Not not a clue. She knew I enjoyed a, a bet. Yeah, sure. But, but like like a bet when people have yeah. got self control and they maybe have mm-hmm. a football bet on a Saturday on some mm-hmm. you know a few pound. Not not I was betting now and. Several years ago, I was betting in thousands. Now, mm-hmm. if I, I was very thankful. Like through joining my fa- family business, my my life turned financially. I, I had a an upturn, and I, I was I was earning a. Com- I'd never earned as much money as what I was earning then. I, yeah. you know, and and I was I was gambling, and I I was I because because I was earning so much more I gambled so much more so I was yeah. I was gambling in the in the thousands you know so the more you had coming in then the, also you were gambling it at, yeah, back out yeah, yeah I was gambling it back out and and I I had many occasions and I'll give you an example of mm-hmm. one I can think of now as we were on our way home from Ascot races in the mm-hmm. summer mm-hmm. you and your wife yeah, yeah and my family and we we were in a sort of seven seater car and my dad was driving at the time did he know that you had an addiction at the time? Or? Me and my dad just, where we both had an addiction, mm-hmm. you sort of didn't, don't admit it to each other because yeah. you, we're actually enjoying those times or we think the devil's allowing us to think we are. Yeah. You know, he, he's sort of kidding us into thinking, actually, some days you do win a couple of times mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he allows you to forget the losses. Okay. But, but yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, when I met Liz, I'd come through the, I'd come through the times where I, I'd, I'd got credit cards and loans, and okay. I lost, I, I, I lost with my ex-wife Natalie. I lost our home that mm-hmm. I bought. Mm-hmm. I was forced into the sale of a property that me and my kids lived in, mm-hmm. which led us into rented accommodation. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't the father either that I should have been because okay. all those times was at home. What happens is the devil allows you then because you've lost the money. You're thinking, how do you replace it? Yeah. But then I became anxious, you know. Well, I, you would. Yeah. That's yeah, what normally yeah. happens. I'm in the lounge at night and I'm not playing with my kids and having fun and enjoying it. I've just got it going over and over in my mind. Like I've just lost 500 quid. What am I going to do to pay next week's rent? What am I going to do to put food on the table? Mm-hmm. Right. I'm going to have to get credit cards. So I racked up. Over a hundred thousand pounds worth of debt, wow. credit cards and loans. When I was sort of like twenty six, twenty seven, okay, twenty eight. I can't uh, imagine that. Yeah, yeah. I no, can see why that some, would give you a lot of anxiety. Yeah, though. even into my early thirties. And in, in in the end, I just turned my back on the debt. I hid it from Liz, and I started drinking more. Mm-hmm. I started. I started uh, drinking at home, and I, I was starting to become a, a like a social alcoholic. And what led you to drink? Was it to forget, or was it just another thing that you'd picked up? Yeah, yeah, sort of to try and forget. It goes okay. hand in hand. Yeah. You've, you've just gone and lost, sort of, on that time home from the that I was sharing with you there on the way home from the horse race, mm-hmm. and as, as my partner sat next to me in the car, mm-hmm. I I lost around two and a half thousand pound in an hour on the way home. And she didn't know? Didn't know. Okay. Didn't know. 
and and I was I spent all these years up until the age of um th- 39 when when there was a change in my life I spent all these years I couldn't build nothing in my life mm-hmm. I I didn't have a decent car mm-hmm. because everything I any spare money I wanted to gamble mm-hmm. I I couldn't own my own home okay. I could I couldn't build a future because mm-hmm. I was filled with addiction and and so I never got anywhere in life it don't matter how hard I worked or how I, how much money I made I still went and I went and gambled just as much yeah but because I was making so much more I would think, well, I've still got a pot of money there so I can sort of feel like I'm okay. Mm-hmm. But that pot of money just kept going down mm-hmm. and it didn't go up, it went down. Mm-hmm. And then and it, it, I, I sort of didn't, I, I didn't get anywhere in life and I, I, I just continued like that all for year after year. And then in, in, two, in uh, June 2019, I came to a point in my life. I I had a a big fallout with my brother, who who I was in business with, and my dad. Okay. And I, we we had a fallout, and I walked away from the family business. And now, I was in a scenario where I'm full of addiction, gambling, drinking. My my partner doesn't know that I gamble to that extent, and. I'm hiding it from her and now I've got no job. So now my pot of money was not, not low. I I probably had enough to, I had no job. I want, I want like I had no money at all, but Mm -hmm. you know, I did, I I hadn't, I was at a low point where I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I was sulking at home. I spent six months at home doing nothing, Mm -hmm. but, sort of gambling all day on my phone why why my partner at the time Liz was at work and then drinking at night you know I was now becoming earlier I said I wasn't an alcoholic I was becoming a social alcoholic though now okay. I was now like it was becoming an every day in the you know get to four o'clock I was sort of having four or five pints every day mm-hmm. you know of the week and all of these times though God was still knocking at my door how do you mean well at this point, my I'm I'm so thankful to my mum because she spent years and years and my and my mum was always my mum never turned from Christ when when she gave her life and she was always knocking the door and saying, you know, Jesus knocking the door was my mum. Okay. Because she just kept saying to me, you know, you do want to come Sunday and all that? And I just kept making excuses. Yeah. Yeah, I just 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 kept making excuses. I could just kept saying, "Oh, I'm I'm hungover," or you yeah. know, oh, "I've had you know," and, and she never put any pressure on me. Okay. You know, she didn't never condemn me or never yeah. you know. Re- she never she was never judgmental. She was yeah, incredible. My mum in July two thousand and nineteen, I had nowhere to turn, and often I find that's when you're at your lowest. Yes, that, it that's is. when you find the Lord, and. There was one Sunday she said to me, you know, do you want to come? And I was like, well, okay. You know, I, th- I was thinking to myself, I need something in my life to, f- to turn my life around, you know. And when you said yes, what did she say? Nothing. She's just, okay. You know, like mums do, supportive, mm-hmm. incredibly yeah. supportive yeah. parents I had. That's amazing. And, and and they saw, you know, they saw all these things with my ex-wife, what was going on, the nights out, the affair I had, the... You know, the, did they understand really t- to the extent of what was going on for you? No, because I think it became a little bit like the norm that this is how my life was. Yeah, you know, and I, I, I hid the gambling. My dad knew I gambled, but yeah, so did he. So we were both in denial. Mm-hmm. So we weren't about to sort of, t- you know, tell each other let's stop doing it because we yeah. both done it together to yeah. to a degree. So in in July two thousand and nineteen, I I. Uh, I went I went back to the church. Uh I started going weekly. I started gaining a hunger. Which church did you go to? Victory Gospel in Portswood. Okay, what yeah. happened then? Yeah, I um I started going and uh you know, I I wasn't on fire for God at the at the first few weeks or mm. or or anything, but I I went wanting to know more, wanting to 
reconnect. Yeah, yeah. And I knew that I needed help. I, I knew that my life wasn't going in the direction that I wanted it to. And I, and, and I recognized it, which is a big part of addiction, mm -hmm. that you can recognize that you've got a problem. Okay. Um, you've, you've, with the free will that God gave us, we can, we can continue to keep going down that path or somewhere deep inside of us. We, I believe we all know right from wrong. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I recognized I needed help. So I, I went, I went back to the church. And when you went to the church, were you looking for God or were you looking for people to help you? What was your idea in your head that you were going to church for? I, I was open sort of to anything. That's so good. Yeah. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah. You knew your help would come from there. Yeah. And you and and the first thing if you if to allow God to move uh -huh. is you've got to open your heart. You've got to swing open the gates of your heart. Sometimes I mean, I you like, don't even know how to yeah. do it. I tell no. you, sometimes you don't no. know what that even looks like. No. And I can tell you sat here right now, when the minute I say swing open the gates of my heart, I could, then I just felt the Holy Spirit come in the room. And I can feel his presence all, all, all over in this room. It's, I can feel the cloud of the Holy Spirit. That's the, so amazing. The, the minute I can sit, the minute I just said, open your heart. And that's when it all changed for me. What happened? In, Do you tell us? Yes. So I had two significant encounters. So in July, in, uh, I'd gone back to the church. Um, I'd started going weekly. So I started being around Peter, it's, it's important to be around Christians. I think so too. I yeah. think you need community because yeah. people always say to me, you don't need people. I'm like, yes, yeah. you do. Yeah. I've tried doing Christianity alone and it is hard. Yeah. So for those that say you don't really need people, I'm like, how do you do this yeah. by yourself? Yeah. This is like the hardest struggle ever. Yeah. So you do need people. You need the presence of God yeah. and that can come through the anointing, the praise and worship, the... The, the, you need Christians and people of God around you that are filled in the spirit and help. Yeah, yeah, and, and there's wisdom there. Yeah, you know, and, there, and there's and there's people that will encourage you. Uh -huh. um, but at the time, I was still still full of gambling and drinking, yeah, yeah. but I was still still going. So now that you went to church, did you find what you were looking for? Um, in August two thousand and nineteen. There's two significant encounters in the last four years that mm -hmm. that have had a major impact and completely changed my life. Okay. I'd now left the family business, no job, full of gambling, full of drinking, mm -hmm. tormented my ex-wife with the life I led. Mm -hmm. Wasn't the father I should have been mm -hmm. in my life to my three children. Yeah. Um, and I went one Sunday. Uh you know, I, I was now going, I would say, three out of four weeks. So on one particular Sunday in August, I don't know which one it was, prophetess Robin Tom Rogers came over and uh, she moves in the gifts of the Spirit. And I was sat on the, our, our church in Victory is three-tiered, mm -hmm. huge building. And I was sat on the second tier because, you know, I felt unworthy and I thought, you know, if I go a few rows back because of the that's addiction, what it feels like, yeah, yeah. I'm filled with. That's a good place to hide. Yeah, I'll, I'll hide. To hide I'll hide church. maybe four or five rows back, just close enough to mm -hmm. be be involved in the service, but not not too close where you know where people see you. Yeah, I know what you mean. And uh, Robin got to the end of her message, and uh, she pointed her finger at me and she's got 30 odd rows in front of me the guy in the baby blue t-shirt which would, would you mind coming forward and uh, let me pray for you and and then I was like well what, what can I do now I'm, go, I'm gonna have to go up um wow and this is in August I went back to the church in around July so it's very quick very quickly happened mm -hmm. and uh so as I approached her and I was quite a few that, you know, I'm a long way back there's, and there's no way Pastor Andrew uh, White was playing the keyboard. And as I got within about 10 feet of Robin, she looked at me and there's no way she could have known this about me. And she looked at me and she goes, your name's Stuart and you're 39 years old. And she's just flown over from America. 
And what did you say? It blew my mind. I guess, yeah, you're right. And Pastor Andrew was like, wow, that's incredible. See, I'm so skeptical of those yeah. things. It's yeah. so bad because I'm yeah. a Christian and I know yeah. the word of God and yeah. I and I believe prophecy, yeah. but I'm still so skeptical sometimes. Yeah. And it's just That's brought it amazing. back to me. And I, I've not remembered till this moment. And I think she said to me, the name Stuart in the Bible, I'm going to have to look this up. So I'm, I, yeah. I, I might not be right about this, but she said it means like man of God or something like that. The, 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 she said, and and she then wow. she then prophesied over my life. What did she say? And the only the only part of the prophecy I can actually remember because I haven't got the videotape of that and and I don't think we videoed as much at Victory in those days mm-hmm. as she said mm-hmm. you know your name's Stuart you're 39 and she said you've you've lost something and she she elaborated more on that and she said but the Lord is gonna get it all back for you and I and I went away until I until I gave my testimony in church a, a few weeks ago I thought that mean, meaning I've lost something and I'm going to get it back is, well, I've lost my job a few weeks all back. All money. Yeah. Instantly, yeah, I'd think. Yeah. Or, 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 or marriage. Yeah. Or, yeah, I've, I've, I, yeah. I'm going to get it. And, and, and the Holy Spirit spoke into my heart a few weeks back, just the day before I gave my testimony so I could share it. And it wasn't the job or the big fallout with my brother. You know, we almost come to, to a fight yeah, over, okay. over the disagreement we yeah. had. It was the 23 years of torment I was going to get back. That's what she meant. That the is ho- incredible. The, the Holy Spirit and the Lord was telling me that if you just keep opening your heart, those 23 years, you're going to get it back. Don't worry about those 23 years of of, of a wrecked life and full of addiction. If you just continue to... If we seek the Lord, we'll find him. And if I continue to do that, I'm going to get it back. But at the time, I didn't know that. So when you went home after she gave you that prophecy, what were you thinking? Were you encouraged by it? It put a hunger and a desire inside of me. To It gave me that. It reminded me of when I was 14 to 16 and I was on fire. Okay. I went away from there and straight away... What pa- changed? Pastor Jim that I'm, I'm really good friends with, mm-hmm. he became a mentor for me. And I didn't know, need to tell him I had a gambling addiction. He knew. The Holy okay. Spirit had, had shared it with him. Mm-hmm. And, and he started mentoring me and he started encouraging me. And I joined the Bible study. Okay. So you then cooperated with God. Yeah. But see, that's important, isn't it? Yeah. I, I opened my heart. You opened your heart, yeah. Yeah, but I think not it all does areas. take cooperation sometimes. Yeah. yeah, I opened my heart as in yeah. I, I was like, I want to know more, Lord. Show me more. Yeah. So I joined the Bible study, yeah. um, and then in 2019, still gambling. Yeah. And the Lord knocks the door, and He's got a way of revealing His glory to you. Yeah. And uh, I went to uh, a horse racing event in 2019. Yeah. And in these days, I I was gambling like I lost thousands. I mean. I, I would place bets of two thousand pound a bet. I can f- I, I can say it quite freely because of what the Lord's done in my life, yeah. and this has got to touch people. So I got to, mm-hmm. I got to put it to how you bad it was. You have to be vulnerable here. Yeah, it. I would lose. I could lose five thousand pound in a weekend. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and uh, I went to the horse race, and there was something of different when I got there, and I didn't know what it was. Okay, and so I went, you went there ready to gamble? Yeah, I went there to gamble. Yeah. I went on a corporate event with my work. So, uh, you know, not um, a company was hope, holding a day at the races, corporate yeah. day, food, mm-hmm. free bar. So mm-hmm. I was drinking as much as I could. Mm-hmm. Now I'm a social alcoholic. Yeah. I mean, I just, you know, all I could think about is can't wait to get to the races. I'm going to have about 10 pints, mm-hmm. drink spirits, gamble all day. Yeah. You know, that was, but I, but I knew Jesus was real and I loved Jesus, but I was filled with addiction. Okay. So we we aren't always we aren't going to come to Christ and always be in a perfect place in our lives. No. We're going to come often. People everybody's got a void. There's yeah. something in everyone when they come to Christ. Yeah. There's and 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 I'll tell you what if anyone get, if anyone comes to Christ and they're perfect and everything they're either not telling the truth or they're in a place in their life where their walk with God maybe will happen so much quicker. Mm-hmm. You know, they will, they, they will, you know, the, the Lord will reveal himself. They're, they're almost fast forwarded. It's fantastic if you can come to a place where I wasn't it fortunate mm-hmm. enough to be in. Yeah. Um, but I often find people, there's somewhere deep down, there's an area of their life that they're broken. And I was broken. 
Yeah, and there is. So at the horse racing, I was throughout the day, I just, I sent something different. And, and on about the third race, and you get six, seven races at the horse racing, I went down and put 300 pound on a horse. I took 600 pound that day, mm -hmm. and that was all I was prepared to lose. Whereas usually, I'll go with my bank card, and I'm prepared to lose everything I've got. So God was already doing a work in Something you. Something was going yeah. on. And I went down and put 300 pound on a horse. And believe it or not, it won for once. And I won some money. Okay. But I left it there on the third race. And I, I went back up and I just kept drinking all day, drinking mm -hmm. and drinking. And I went home. My dad picked me up. My dad didn't come that day for some reason with mum. Mm -hmm. They picked me up from Swanwick train station. I went home. And later on, there's a major event. And, uh, and I can tell you about the Holy Spirit moving um, in a particular way. But I woke up the next day and I was set free from gambling. Just like that? What happened? And it was just like that. What happened? I came back to the church. Yeah. I'd opened my heart. How did you open your heart? I'd, what does I, that look I, like? I recognised that gambling was the biggest stronghold over my life. I was in chains. I couldn't own... It was stopping my... It was just causing so many problems in my life. Mm -hmm. And and I knew that I recognised that, so I accepted that, and I actually opened my heart to it by, by just saying, "Lord, over to you, change me." That as simple as that. Change me, yeah. yeah. I, I, you know, you know, it, it it didn't happen straight away, but I, you know, I I went back to the church, just started praising and worshiping week mm -hmm. after week, giving, you know, opening my heart, listening to the word of God, you know, and 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 being around people of God. And and what he because I'd m made that step and gone back to the church, mm -hmm. and and opened my heart in that area of my life, he revealed his glory to me. How do you mean? So I mean, God was faithful to you. You were faithful back. How yeah. did he reveal it? He revealed his glory by supernaturally by just taking away that addiction to gamble. He he was like, I've stepped out in faith and came back and opened my heart and wanted to now have a relationship with Jesus. And he, he, he's met me. He's met me at my lowest point yeah. by revealing himself and taking away that addiction for gambling. And that's a supernatural encounter. That's, that's a amazing. divine encounter. That's amazing. That's a divine encounter in the Lord. And I'm, when that happens to you and, and, you, and how did that happen is suddenly – Everything changes. Well, it would. I mean, what you just so you just woke up the next day and you didn't feel the need to gamble anymore. August two thousand and nineteen, which it's is just mind which, which is which is now over four years ago, and I have never felt tempted to gamble ever again. That's just unbelievable. And I gambled nearly every day of my life. Do you know how amazing that sounds? That yeah. blows my mind yeah. that I'm a Christian. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I've grown up in church. I've seen amazing things. Yeah. But this just blows my mind. Yeah. It, I, I've never gambled ever again. No temptation. Nothing. Never, never gambled. What did you think? Can you... I uh, can't even imagine what that must be like. What did you think? I didn't really share it with people. How could you not share... Oh, oh my gosh. How could you not tell everybody? Because I could feel the Holy Spirit doing a work in me. And and I was stepping out of my comfort zone, mm -hmm. and I was I was I was meeting the Lord. I feel to get a change in your life. It's like you've got to meet Him halfway. But did you doubt? Did you ever think maybe I'm not set free? Let's just see. Or how did you just know? Because I had no desire to, to pick pick up my phone that and gamble. That is just so beyond. That and, is and amazing. It, it was just a supernatural encounter that. Like I, I just woke up and I was set free, and I believe that that was got, got the Lord revealing Himself to me because that was the moment the journey really began. That okay. was when the Lord knows the beginning from the end. Mm -hmm, he, he, mm -hmm. he, 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 there's no time with the Lord. He, 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 he knew I'd be here today already. So, so that was the beginning, and uh, so what happened after that? I just think this is so incredible. So in April, I, I then was, I was hungry. I, I then, 
I then still drank. I still yeah. drank beer. Beer was yeah. my drink. I was, was that like an, another the other addiction? Yeah, yeah. So so I was a social alco- alcoholic. I enjoyed social events. Mm-hmm. I like Friday nights. Blimey, mm-hmm. when I finished work on a Friday, mm-hmm. I like going for sort of, I say four or five pints that then sort of led to a lot more than that. And uh, I, I, I never, I wasn't an alcoholic as in I woke up in the morning and drank, yeah. but I was a social alcoholic that mm-hmm. I still believed it was the answer. I believed it was the answer to a bad week at work or, mm-hmm. or an, you know, an argument with your partner yeah. or something going wrong with your children. I believed it was you open alcohol and that takes all the problems away. But the answers aren't at the bottom of the bottle. No, obviously not. No. So in, in January um, 20, so in, in October 19, I was set free from gambling. So that was that was the Lord revealing himself to me. So in That's so good, Stu. Yeah. So in 2020, in January, I'll share a quick financial miracle that came off of the back of being set free from gambling. Okay. We found a me and me and my partner, we weren't married, Liz. Okay. Um, we found a house that we wanted to move to. And uh it 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 was up for a lot more money than we were able to buy it for. Mm-hmm. And originally it was up for around £150,000 more than we had. Okay. So we had, we had, uh, we agreed the sale at £150,000 less than what he, the guy originally put it up for. And it was where we dreamed of living. Yeah. So we went to get the mortgage and my wife, uh, sorry, she's my wife now, but Liz at the time said to me, you know, I need your bank statements. And uh, Liz worked in banking, so she worked for Halifax. So okay. I just let her take care of all that because I thought, well, you work in banking, mm-hmm. you sort the mortgage out. And then I come home one day, a couple of days later, and uh, and I thought, well, we can get the mortgage. We earn enough between us. Mm-hmm. And she looked at me and uh, I thought, I've done something wrong here. You know, when you well, when you get you, the look, when your yes. partner gives you that look, yeah. you go, "Oh, I've done some here. What is it?" And I'm thinking, I hate that feeling. I'm of... thinking, well, I don't gamble, so she hasn't found out. She she didn't know I, I'd been set free, and I still not even told Liz. So was she totally unaware of this addiction? She didn't think. Yeah, she still didn't know to that oh, day that I had an addiction. Oh my goodness! She, she didn't know know, okay. know until what what I tell you now. Gosh! And she had a look on her face, and. Uh, I thought, well, I know I've not had an affair or done anything like that. Yeah. And she said to me, I can't believe you've hid this from me. And I goes, what do you mean hid it from you? She goes, well, we're not going to get a mortgage now. She said, because I had to provide 12 months bank statements. Yeah. And 12 months ago before mm-hmm. that, on my t- furthest month bank statement, I'd lost £30,000 in one month. Wow. Did, were you not aware that that was in the bank statement? Because I, I was suddenly not gambling, oh I forgot. My. But that's a huge amount of money. <laughs> How did you think she wouldn't notice? Because I forgot it was on there. Because after that, I yeah. was gambling on credit cards or, yeah, or for some yeah. reason, which I know the Lord had done yeah. it, I wasn't gambling on my bank. Mm-hmm. But it must have been mm-hmm. through credit cards or, yeah. or putting on my credit card and then clearing my credit yeah. card through my bank. She said, we're not going to get a mortgage. Because that they're not going to lend to us because thirty thousand pound that's like an addict. You're not you you're you're like not a safe um, person yeah. to lend to mm-hmm. because you've you know you've got a problem with gambling. And I so did you admit you were a problem at that point? That's when she knew. I shared with her what happened with me at the horse racing, and I said, look, but I had to prove that to her over time. I mean, yeah. my 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 partner was an atheist. Okay. So incredibly supportive of me within the church but she just didn't believe and yeah. she took she had the mindset of unless you can prove something to her she she didn't believe at mm-hmm. the time mm-hmm. and i said there's nothing i can do i'm gonna have to leave leave this with the lord i said if this house is for us mm-hmm. he'll come through and she said to me well maybe if he or maybe i'll believe in god if we get a mortgage because there's no way we're gonna get a mortgage i'll believe in god if we get a mortgage you know what wow we got the mortgage mm-hmm I do you know. Yeah, we got the mortgage. Did she believe? Uh, no. That's what normally happens. Yeah, 
Yeah, it always that is so incredible. Tears, so, about, so now, yeah. so God gave you the mortgage when you were not supposed to get the mortgage. What did you think and feel when that happened? This is like one miracle on top of another. Yeah. What my, What would you just, think? Just, it, the just in, in, inside of me, I my, would have passed out. My hunger for God was just going from level to level to level. My desire for Jesus was just. Did your wife not think that that was just incredible? No. What? It was just such a miracle. No, that... just thought it was in the natural, not the supernatural. She thought it that was That cannot the... be in the natural, yeah, though. It was the it, bank yeah. maybe taking a view that I hadn't mm-hmm, got mm-hmm. any gambling on the next 11 months yeah. and all that, where mm-hmm. I... I, I just knew what God was doing and he gave yep. he gave us a home that I never, you know, sort of dreamt of living in where yeah. we live and uh, reduced the price of it for us as well. No so way. that we could get it. I just was in awe of the Lord. I would be too. Yeah. So in April tw- in April uh, 2020, my, my dad died. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was in COVID. He had cancer. He had COVID. He died. Gosh. And and uh, I don't know about you, but it just felt like we lost the next year of our lives, didn't we? Mm-hmm. We went to online services yeah. and everything and, turned uh, weird. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah, uh, I'm so sorry to hear about yeah. your dad. That's really yeah. sad. We uh, mourned my dad and uh, had had a, a year of online services, and I felt it a struggle not being in church. Mm-hmm. I I encourage people to yeah. to d- don't don't walk this Christian life in your own strength. Walk, walk it in the Lord's strength and walk it being around, uh, surrounded by Christians, surrounded by fellowship, surrounded by the anointing that comes through the praise and worship. When 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 two or more are gathered, you know, he's there in the midst. You know, yeah. he's he's among the Lord's there. Yeah. And, and it comes through the anointing of the praise and worship. Yeah. I, I really believe that. So we 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 all lost a year of our lives. I mean, just before my dad died though. Me and my brother reconciled our relationship before he died, which I thank God for. Okay, and that was another God doing. Yeah, 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 and it, uh, it that was amazing. And uh, so God was slowly fixing things, exactly. but like in huge miraculous ways. Yeah, piecing your life back to giving you better things than you had before. Do you remember what I said to you about earlier? The twenty three years you're going to get it back. I just think it's such a huge thing he's done. Normally, yeah. if God says that to someone, God starts to piece their life together bit by bit. But this yeah. is mind-blowing. Yeah, It's just crazy, amazing. Yeah. But what I did have is I had the door firmly shut on the Lord of alcohol. Yeah. I enjoy drinking. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I still was drinking. And, 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 and Did you think you had an addiction of drinking? Or... Well, I... Well, the Lord knew that I couldn't cope with being. I think He knew that I would. If He'd have set me free all in one go of everything I had wrong in my life, I think I would have uh, turned back to it. And I think He knew what really? He needed to sort of change my life over a period of time because He know I think it would have been too much, and I wouldn't have been able to handle it. The lo- the Lord's timing's perfect. He, he that knows. That's incredible. What makes you think you would have turned back to it if you were healed from if it altogether? I, I just don't think. I think the the, the type of lifestyle I led and, yeah. the, and the events I went to that involved alcohol mm-hmm. and the amount mm-hmm. of people, all my friends are big drinkers. Mm-hmm. And I think I, I didn't have the spiritual strength to cope with it. Mm-hmm. My spirit man wasn't strong enough. Okay, yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying by yeah, that? Of course. Yeah. I didn't know enough about the Lord and there were areas mm-hmm. in my life that I wasn't strong enough and my spirit man couldn't have controlled it. Yeah. So one by one the Lord was healing me, the mm-hmm. gambling, you know, that that went. And then he and then he, me and my brother set a business up in in April uh 21. Yep. And uh I've got a few notes I need I'd need them for the timelines. We we've been allowed back in the church, so as soon as we could get back in the church, I, I got yet. back. Yeah, because in lockdown, I was drinking every day. It got to three o'clock, and the drinking started becoming like my gambling. I was drinking in lockdown as well. You know what? I don't even drink, but I did start to drink in lockdown. Yeah, it's little bits, but it's yeah. just like then you start yeah. to because every day you're like, well, what now? Well, I'm just going to start drinking before you know it. You start drinking at eleven a.m. This is amazing that you said that because my 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 eleven a.m. was around three o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, was it? It was. I had to do whatever I had to do to get to three o'clock because I was yeah. thinking, well, at three o'clock, I can I can open up my first can of beer. 
Yeah, no, we were like that, me and my housemate. We were a bottle of Prosecco every day. Yeah. But it's so weird because we only did it through the lockdown. We started a home gym. We- yeah. The two just did not go together, but we no. actually worked out loads, meaning we then drank less, but it was, it was a weird time. Yeah, yeah. So it gets... It, I, it, it does get you deep into I can things. relate to that because I was yeah. feeling exactly the same in lockdown. And I and uh, I thank God, like, we didn't have addictions and stuff, but still a lot yeah. of people did turn to alcohol yeah. in the and, lockdown. And I found it hard and, and and the devil was still still in my life. And I, I was getting into a scenario where not, not being in the church, which, again, I, I can't reiterate how important that is to... Yeah to be in your church that you you that is your home i know and uh so so we we lost the year of of lockdown and then in in uh april 21 although although early early in 2020 me and my brother before my dad died came back together we set up a business back together Mm -hmm. back in the property because we 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 build houses for a living and sell houses Mm -hmm. and we set a business up together got back in church and I, I couldn't get there quick enough i i needed to be back in church and listening to the word of god i thank god for pastor andrew and mm-hmm. jim and pastor josh and thank they, god yeah, for them that they yeah. uh they bring they, 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 the the anointing is so over their lives and the word of god they bring it just installs a fire in you you know and i a agree hunger, you know i listen to the daily devotionals and i'm yeah. every time i listen to one encouraged I think, this is just what I needed to hear today. Yeah. This is just what I needed to hear today. And then, and then, yeah, sometimes I send it to other people because it is so just so supernatural yeah. what you receive from it. But yeah. also Amen. I think, doesn't it highlight the importance to you? It's so important to have leaders yeah. who help you yeah. because you don't get that in every church. No. And, they, but, and that's sad. Yeah. And they don't understand how to support yeah. you or how to yeah. love yeah. you properly. Yeah. But then, the, then they're so busy with, with like big numbers of people in church. How do they just focus on one person needing yeah. help? Yeah. Well, the great thing about Victory is there's several pastors and, and quite a few married couples that are the pastors yeah. and their support network's incredible at Victory. And uh, they, they've all their, their door is always open. The ministries and Victory Gospel Church from the homeless ministry, uh, and people in need, and and all the other ministries within their doors are always open. So October twenty twenty one, that second significant encounter that changed my life. Mm-hmm. Robin Tom Rogers was back. Okay, prophetess Robin, the lady. Yeah. He pointed her finger at you. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it was two years later. And she did, She travels the world. There's no way she would have remembered me. Um, I, I, the, the, drinking, the drinking now was bad. I, I, I was now a definitely a social alcoholic. I'd, okay. I'd replaced the gambling with the drinking mm-hmm. um, whilst on fire for the Lord and very aware of these amazing works that he was doing in my life. You can you can love Jesus with all your heart but still have struggles and addictions and things. Yeah. They don't just fall yeah. away. Yeah. Well, the Lord ate with sinners yeah. and surrounded himself with people that had addictions. Mm-hmm. He didn't tolerate it. It wasn't like he did it because he was acceptant of it and wanted to be surrounded by these people. But he poured out his love to call them to, to a changed life. Mm-hmm. And that's why I believe that you, there's many people, including myself, that were in church mm-hmm. and, and we got addictions and problems. And mm-hmm. it might not be addictions, but you might have family issues. Or Everyone's problems. got problems, yeah. But, but you're there because you're in his in presence and he's calling you to mm-hmm. a changed life. But are you going to accept it? So Ro- Robin called me and my partner up, still not married. Um, were you in church? As in like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're both, both there, called mm-hmm. us up. And she prophesied a second time over me when my partner stood alongside me. And, and she didn't remember me from the time before. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I'm going to share the words um, with, Please share. with, with Please you and the share. listeners. And she said to me, the Lord's told me to share with you, there's a work I'm doing in him. I'm aligning their lives up, me and my partner. And they don't know the fullness of what you're getting ready to do in their lives. And all they've got to do is say, look what the Lord's done. And say, yes, Lord. The Lord, she looked at me and she said, 
the Lord's drawn you in, son, like one with a hook in a fish. The Lord has said, I have need of you, and then things I'm going to do in you. And that, and that's what Robin... That's so fantastic. Yeah, that's what... Uh, Who doesn't want to hear that? So he, she was saying that you're going to bring your family to faith. Yeah. And uh, she, uh, she, 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 she shared that. She shared that with me. Mm-hmm. And uh, again, just before my testimony of a few, a few weeks back, I sort of looked over that and uh, the aligning the, their lives up. Well, me and Liz weren't married. Mm. So to get everything that the Lord has got in store for you and, and, and to... The, the works that he's got planned for you to carry out in your lives. It's, it's important that, you know, you try and align the areas of your life that are f- full of sin. Yeah. And I've lived a very sinful life. I suddenly realized that, you know, we're not married. Mm-hmm. I'm now, I've now got an absolute devotion to the Lord and I want him to, you know, work in my life, and yeah. and I want I want the things I'm starting to I want to share Jesus and and go and uh, carry out the Lord's work in whatever way mm-hmm. He wants me to do so. But how can I do that? Full of sin, I'm still mm-hmm. drinking. I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm coming into church Sunday, but I'm going home to drink mm-hmm. sort of a half a dozen pints, dr- cooking the Sunday roast. Yeah, you know it, yeah. It, how can you know? There's no middle ground. Yeah, you how can't can the two go together? you can't have one foot in the world and one foot in 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 the church and in the yeah. glory of God and and think right I I can have everything God's got in store for mm-hmm. me and He can use me to go and share the gospel but behind closed doors I'm still like a social alcoholic mm-hmm. so Robin knew that and that's what the look this this amazing word that she gave me so she, I I only realised a few weeks ago what the revelation of that was mm-hmm. and I went back and found the video and I watched it over and over again and the Lord mm-hmm. started to speak to me. So I started sort of having a, not a guilt, but the Holy Spirit was making me aware that, you know, you've got to put this right. You're not married. We were engaged, but had no plan to get married. Yeah. And I spoke to Pastor Jim and he, he, he shared with me and he said, you know, make a plan, you know, to get married. And, and maybe that's, you know, what you need to do. And, and I started feeling a guilt going to bed at night. Okay. And I started thinking, this isn't right living this yeah. sinful mm-hmm. sexual life of being unmarried. I'm going off on a bit of a tangent, but it's important to say these things. Yeah. Because this is real life yeah. and it happens to yeah. people every single day. So I'd get in bed with my my um partner, Liz, yeah. at light at night and I'd feel like this isn't right. Mm-hmm. Conviction. Yeah. So yeah. thankfully our business was going well. So I I, I, I said to Liz, we've got to make a plan to get mm-hmm. married. Mm-hmm. So after uh, the prophecy in October twenty one, in uh, at the end of that at the end of that year in November December, I went to Antigua on holiday, and we found a hotel to get married in, and we set a date, and the minute I set that date, that all that worry and guilt came off of me because the Lord knew my heart, and I was trying to align my life with His will, mm-hmm. and 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 I made that. I knew the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and when He speaks, you've got to act. Okay. And 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 I went and I booked the wedding, and all that sh- little bit of shame and guilt. Well, yeah, and it's the, shame and guilt and, and conviction. And, and knowing that I I was living a sinful life, being unmarried yeah. in Christ. Yeah. I went and booked it, and it came off me in one go. So you made a plan, and obviously God can see that your heart is for following Him. I bet that must have been a weight really lifted off you, right? It, it, it was a, it was a, it was, a, it was starting to consume me daily being yeah. married and like almost like I was yeah. worried about going to bed at night. Yeah, you know, where, yeah. and it was starting to really bother me. And that yeah. came off, and that was fantastic. And I continued to enjoy my holiday while I was there mm-hmm. in November, to sort of twenty twenty one. And it just gets so good now <laughs> it gets so good yeah. like this is already so this amazing this could be the it, good bit but, but this it's is all gonna the be good the, bit, i don't but... even know what the best bit is but yeah. this one is so good so the door was firmly shut on alcohol mm-hmm. so i wasn't allowing the god to work in any area of my life that revolved around alcohol because you know that was my thing i enjoyed that did you not want god to take that from you no okay no 
until that moment with Robin. And when I came away from that moment, mm-hmm. and then I went on to, you know, go and book my wedding, after I had to, after she prophesied over me, mm-hmm. I then had so many encounters in my life in those last two or three years. I said to the Lord, I looked up, I, could, I can't remember where or when it was, but I know it, I know I did it. Mm-hmm. And I said, right, Lord, it's over to you now. Every area of my life, I open up. I feel the Holy Spirit now. Hallelujah. I said, every area of my life, change me, mold me, come and do your will. What made you come to this finally to this step? Just because how can I have these moments where he's revealing his glory to me and ever be the same? I knew that my life was now to follow Jesus all the days of my life and carry out his work, whatever he had planned for me. That moment was now, Lord, a second prophecy from Robin, Mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and it, and it all everything I could I could this understand is it. So surreal. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. So surreal. Yeah. This is the type of stuff you read about in the Bible. <laughs> this is just so incredible to hear. Yeah. I, and, I just can't even picture what and, that must be. And feel those like. doors now, I had my heart wide open. Yeah. I carried on drinking. Okay. But it was like, Lord, come on. So you I'm were not open. trying to do anything in your own strength, I didn't but do you were anything. inviting God to do the work in yeah. you. It's like when you at Christmas, we all eat too much, don't we? Yeah. Or I do. I like mm. eating. December's a bad month for me. A lot yeah. of takeaways yeah. and a lot of eating out and a lot Welcome of desserts. Welcome to the club. And, you know, I put on a few pounds. And yeah. then after after Christmas, you know, 99% of us all say, we're <laughs> going to go on a diet, aren't we? Mm-hmm. So the the way I describe a swinging open the gates of your heart is that when, when the majority of people go on that diet and join that gym in mm-hmm. January and we're mm-hmm. all going to get fit mm-hmm. is that you make a decision that you're going to do that. And you, and, yep. and 99% of people make a yep. decision with their head. It's a decision that, yeah, sounds good. Not with I'm, the heart. No. Exactly. I'm they gonna, do have to come together. I'm going to have to make that. I'm going to make a decision with my head and I'm going to go on a diet. And on January the mm-hmm. 1st, I'm going to be in the gym and I'm going to eat better. But when you make it with your head and you make it in the flesh, it's a temporary thing. Yeah, It's it going is. to come to an end. Yeah. And it's gonna it's gonna end, and that diet in two or three weeks, you're gonna mm-hmm. go back to that takeaway, yeah. and you're gonna yeah. go Saturday. You know, yeah. oh, I'm gonna, mm-hmm. you know, maybe because your heart's bit. not in it. No, your heart's yeah. not in it. Your heart's got to be in it, and you've but, got to be determined. But yeah. the, the all the Lord wants, and this is how I can explain to people that what gave me my breakthrough, everything was about the heart. Mm-hmm. Given the heart to the Lord, He wants your heart. Out of everything, that is what He wants. Mm-hmm. Because when he's got it, when he's got your heart, he's got you, mm-hmm. and he and and that was my moment. Go for it, Lord. I'm open. Change me. I don't care about how I'm seen at these parties. If I'm going to be different, I'll be different. But yeah. just going. I didn't know it was going to be. He was going to set me free. But there mm-hmm. you go. Have 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 your way in my life. And were you expecting? So you were expecting that something was going to happen. I I don't I I, I don't know when or. Or where or what was going to mm-hmm. happen mm-hmm. and how quick it was going to happen. But yeah, I think the minute I said, change me, mold me, it's over to you now. It's not me. That area of drinking, if you don't want me to drink, that's it. I'm open to it. Mm-hmm. So in late January 2022, I went on holiday with my uh uh, brother's family and me and Liz and Esme. Me, me and Liz had a child together. Okay. We'd booked our wedding for June. Mm-hmm. And I went to Barbados and uh, I was drinking on the plane all the way there. Mm-hmm. I had a couple of days drinking mm-hmm. while I was over there. Mm-hmm. Enjoying myself like I usually do. Yeah. You know, like sort of having a good time on the beach. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, revolving around alcohol most of the time because yeah. the devil thinks you're having a good time. But yeah. really... You're not, because then it yeah. leads to a you know problems. Yeah. And I went to bed one one night, and uh, thank God for this moment. And I woke my wife up in the middle of the night in Barbados. This is my favorite part. And I said to her, I said to Liz, I've got to share something with me with you, because when I testify this to everyone in the future you're my witness 
And what it felt like is, for about an hour, the Holy Spirit woke me up. And the way I always describe this when I give my testimony is, and this is the, only the second time in a, in a public way I've given it, I've given it mm -hmm. to many individuals, is it was like being wheeled into a hospital on an operating table. You've been wheeled in, the, doc the doctors have come in, and I was led there, and I knew I was having an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Was it for a vision or a dream, would you say? No, I was wide awake. Wide awake, wow. Yeah. A home. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. This, okay. this, I was awake. So I'm on the operating table and around, I would say it felt like there was around six or seven doctors around me. And the Holy Spirit was, I was encountering Jesus, Holy, the Holy Spirit, his presence that he left on earth when he went up to heaven mm. with Almighty God. And I could feel physically like I was under an anesthetic. So when you know when you're knocked out, yeah. But I wasn't knocked out. It was like the from my neck down, I couldn't feel a thing, mm -hmm. but I was awake. So mm -hmm. I wasn't asleep, mm -hmm. and that it was like the Holy Spirit and the doctors were performing an operation on me. Wow! I could feel without any pain, like I had six or seven doctors around me, and they had opened me up, and they were changing me. But what it was is it was the Holy Spirit changing me. What did that look like? That that just felt like it wasn't words at that point. It it, it was it, it it was how I'm saying it. If you could imagine having a having maybe a heart transplant yeah. or or you having your kidneys removed or you were having a you, it was like a load of like a car bonnet when someone's yeah. working on the engine. Yeah, they're doing a load of work on it to get it to work again. And could you see? Could you see things? No, I could just feel it. That is in the spirit, incredible. and and it was like I was being that moment when I said, "Change me, Lord, mold me, Lord. This, your will be done in my life." He that was happening at that moment, and the and the and the doctors were in there, and they were working on me, and it was I'm using the doctors as the yeah, Holy yeah. Spirit as yeah. like a parable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jesus spoke. I'm yeah. trying to give it a little bit like that because that's the way He's told me to sh share it. And then at the end of the operation on me that the Holy Spirit performed, the Holy I, I heard the voice of God through the Holy Spirit. And he said to me that I've changed you. You're going to be teetotal and you're never going to drink ever again, but not now. And that's the important bit, not now. It isn't tonight. I've done the work on you, but you're never going to be the same again mm -hmm. from this moment. So I woke Liz up and I shared all this with her and she probably thought I was a raving lunatic and I'm some, I'm mad. And I thought it was in the morning and I just woke up. But she then went on to tell me, no, it was in the middle of the night. You woke me up in the middle of the night How to long tell was the Holy this. Spirit doing the work? I'd say about an hour. Wow. Well, you were just and in the And the presence like of God, hour. yeah, oh, all over me. And God. I could feel, and I would just sort of like, it was like I was led on an operating table and 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 I could feel those like a, under a car bonnet, the spanners changing the parts on the engine, or 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 that heart transplant, or the kidneys coming out, or work on the liver. It was all happening. I just pray to encounter like even five percent of that kind of Holy Spirit. I, yeah. I, I just I just can't imagine how amazing that must that my yeah. So I I said to Liz, you know, I'm never going to be the same again. So we woke up the next morning. What did what was her response? She was still an unbeliever, but she mm. was like starting to see changes in my life, you know, mm. with the gambling and 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 yeah. how hungry I was for God, and yeah. my I was attending church every week. Yeah. And I woke up the next morning, mm. and I went down to the pool where I'd usually open a beer. Mm -hmm. In that moment, God took away my desire to get drunk. So I saw a scripture in the Bible, where, and and I I got to look it up so I can share it properly. But it said something like, "Yao shall not drink to get drunk." I I, you, I, know that one, I yeah. used to drink to get drunk. That's yeah. why I always drink. I never drank to get drunk again. There was the first change, and the second change was he took away my desire for beer, which was my favourite drink. I loved beer. Yeah. Not only because it got me drunk, but because I liked the taste of it. Mm -hmm. So, so all of a sudden, I went down by the pool, and I never drank a beer to this day. I never drank a beer ever again. So, if you saw one, what would you be thinking? 
What went at the time? Yeah. Well, I just, it, it took away. I didn't want it. Oh my God. I didn't want a beer. I was like, I'd never went back to a the beer. The next day. So I started drinking like a social drinker that didn't mm-hmm. drink to get drunk, but enjoyed a couple of drinks. Okay. And I believe that the Lord didn't completely set me free at that moment. But I, he did set you free from... Drinking to get drunk. Drink- yeah. But it, but On I a holiday. Still, yeah. But I still I still drank a little bit as in yeah. like I started drinking like just on a Friday. I but went, that's a huge Oh, it's huge, unbelievable. Hallelujah. They've done it. The 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 to feel that encounter with God, although it it, it was like he did he did the hundred percent. The work was done. Mm-hmm. But what what I am before I move on, I prophesied to Liz, or I yeah. thought it was a prophecy. Yeah. Because I was prophesying what's going to happen in my life but it wasn't a prophecy it's a prophetic word Mm -hmm. and the difference of the prophetic word is it's already done a prophecy is i've got to carry out that work so Mm -hmm. i've got to Mm -hmm. buy into that Mm -hmm. and and Mm -hmm. and make those changes in my life where where what i know the lord did was a prophetic word it was done that those that i was going to be teetotal all i had to do is just carry out what what he had done on that night in me so i got back off the holiday was drinking a couple of rum and cokes on a friday wow. now and again but you know i went to drinking two pints of guinness yeah. for some reason mm-hmm. on a friday that mm-hmm. was my enjoyment with drinking then the lord knew that i had a couple of things coming up that might have been hard for me to cope with if if i'd have completely become teetotal one i always remember it was a friend of mine's birthday a big a big party like we went out in london yeah. And that was one of the moments where I was on the verge, where I almost turned back. I drank maybe a few too many. Mm-hmm. And and very quickly, the Holy Spirit showed me the next morning that it gave me a way out. Mm-hmm. And when you allow God to work in your life, the Holy Spirit very quickly will show you when it's some, it's not from God and mm-hmm. you shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. And yeah. that's what that's what he did. I had I I'd, I'd said a couple of words to my partner Liz that weren't right, and I knew quickly that there's the effects of alcohol again. Yeah, and yeah. and I come back from that and carried on drinking my two pints of Guinness. Yeah, and then at my wedding in in uh, June the first, yeah, twenty twenty two, being having thirty or forty friends yeah. come out drinking every day on the beach, mm. I never shared any of what God was doing in my life because I knew it was not the right time yeah. so I, I i they didn't know i wasn't really drinking but i was like having one or two and then i'd have a coke and they would think it was a rum and coke yeah and i kept it from people what was happening so we got married a, an amazing day came back and all this time when i was just drinking on friday i was thinking god when's this moment of being teetotal yeah you know that and i always felt like it was going to complete my testimony so mm-hmm. i could then go and share it Mm-hmm. And I thought, I can't share it yet because I'm not teetotal. Yeah. But what I realized is, though, is there's never a, a wrong or right moment to share your testimony because the Lord will never stop working in your life. You're yeah. always going to have more encounters. Yeah. You're going to have more supernatural yeah. signs, wonders, and miracles yeah. happen in your life. And, and, and I was thinking, right, I'm down to one pint a week now. So at this point, he delivered you, obviously, from gambling and now drinking was was would, was barely in my life yeah but but there was still an encounter to happen where i was going to be set free completely of completely it. of alcohol and then you would have been set free from everything yeah and i aligned my life through the t- prophecies i got married yeah i changed that about me yeah and uh so you were doing things god's way yeah so, yeah that's a great way of putting it and how were you completely set free the 9th of august uh don dr glenn arecchion Okay. Uh, pastor from America came mm-hmm. over, and I don't go to Tuesday night meetings, or so I generally just go on a Sunday. And mm-hmm. you know, the, the the devil does his best to keep you from going to, you know, when you're when when you're on fire for God, you're at your most dangerous to the devil because yeah. because then you're you want it in other people's lives, and then he wants mm-hmm. to, he doesn't mm-hmm. want to allow you to go and mm-hmm. minister and share with people God's mm-hmm. goodness. All the things that stop you going on a Tuesday night, you know, you got an episode of something on TV Anything. or work, or you yeah. think, oh, the kids got to put the kids to bed or mm. what, tired or, and all that. 
something came over me and I was umming and ahhing and thinking, shall I go, shall I go? And I just said to Liz, who then was now my wife, Liz, I'm going. And I got the coat and I just walked out. I Is gave, that a Tuesday evening? Tuesday evening. Okay, and yeah. I gave myself no excuse. I just got in the car and went. So I was praising and worshipping. And uh, there was a young lady that I knew to say hello to, but I didn't know her very well. And she's going to be in my testimony for the rest of my life. A, a young, uh, uh, a Polish lady called uh, Natalia. At church? Yeah. She mm-hmm. goes to Victory. She, I now know her very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, lovely woman of God who's on fire for Jesus. And uh, the Lord's going to work through her. I know it. She came up to me during the praise and worship and sort of tugged at my arm. And uh, she, and I thought, like, but I was a bit reluctant at first. And I was like, oh, okay, hi, you know, everything all right? And she sort of said, the Lord wants me to speak to you. I can't praise and worship because the Holy Spirit keeps telling me to come and share this with you. And, and then I was then intrigued. Well, what is this? And she said to me, the Lord wants you to know that you're a faithful son. I goes, okay. So she walked off. And then for the next few moments, I was thinking about it. And I was st- it started to come back to me like, you know, you changed me with the gambling prophecies that had happened. He aligned my li- uh, a life with my partner mm-hmm. to be married. Yeah. The drinking was slowing down. I left the service and I walked out of there. And he completely set me free of drinking. How did you know? I knew it was the moment. The Lord, when the Lord speaks to you, you know, and he spoke through someone. The, the Lord speaks to and through us, doesn't he? And, and the oh, Holy Spirit wow. gives you a word. And that moment that, that Sister Natalia came over to me and again, I oh, thank God he, and hallelujah, he changed me. That was it. From that moment, I was set free. Gambling, put my life right with being married, alcohol. I was set free from addiction from a man that was a social alcoholic and uh, as bad as any heroin addict in, in gambling mm-hmm. and lost everything in mm-hmm. his life and had divorce and, mm-hmm. and, and wasn't the father he should be and yeah. everything that the devil came and, and, and tormented me. The 23 years I got back in that moment and I was set free in Jesus. Oh my gosh! So what, what what happened after that? What did you I, What did you say to your wife? I what shared did... I shared it I shared it with her. Went back and shared it with her. What did she say? Amazing, yeah, that's amazing. She never ever judged what God was doing in my life. She wasn't a believer, but she, but she always encouraged me. And I thank God for Liz that the. the she never made it difficult for me, which partners can do. Yeah, of you know, course. She, she, Friends and partners and yeah, yeah. Yeah, but hallelujah, through that through that service, uh, I became set free and and God completed his work in my addictions. And, and, and That I, is so good, Stu. Yeah. That is actually my brain just cannot wrap yeah. its head. Yeah. I cannot wrap my brain around any of it I I know God can do it and I know it's so amazing that he does hearing it just wow like what do you even say like God is so yeah yeah amazing yeah and as your walk with God continues and you align your life and you open your heart and to Mm -hmm. anybody that ever watches this video and and that that how it needs helps being set free from addiction Christian or non-Christian is Firstly, you've got to open your heart to Jesus. You, mm-hmm. If you keep the door shut, you're not allowing him to work in your life. Mm-hmm. You know, cut, if, you, if, if, you, if you're a Christian and your walk with God isn't where it needs to be, you know, I came back to the church. I, I joined a Bible study. I'm not saying that you've got to do that, but you surround yourself with Christians. Don't mm-hmm. surround yourself with people of the world because be in this world, don't be of this world. Mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're in it. we got to be in it. You know, we yeah. were on earth, but yeah. don't be of it. Don't be part of the, the sins of this world. Turn from sin. Mm-hmm. Don't, because it's so easy to become of this world with all the desires and the so temptations of addictions and the TVs and the, mm-hmm. the on your phone, the scrolling mm-hmm. of everything that's on there. It's very easily to be consumed of it and it to overcome you and then it, and then it, and then you're allowing what I spoke about earlier the mm-hmm. devil he comes into your life and he'll start tempting you mm-hmm. so be be surrounded by christians and so so what's your life looked like since all of this has happened 
so yeah, to 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 finish and 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 hopefully you know I get I've I've you know hopefully we can share another moment with this because I've got so much I can share with you yes. about financial breakthrough and, yeah. and breakthrough within your families and mm-hmm. I, oh, yeah I'd love you to yeah. come on in in the future episodes and 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 talk more about yeah what this looks yeah. like so my my life just I just became more and more hungry for God I'd yeah. given my life to Jesus and. And, and and then I spent from that moment, um, I'll fast forward. So almost like that was in uh, August 2022. Mm-hmm. So it's like a year and a half roughly ago. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm in church every Sunday, you know, mm-hmm. unless I'm away on holiday that, you know, I'll that comes first in my life. Mm-hmm. Jesus is first in my life with my family second. That's the most important thing to me is to be surrounded by the Christians and the word of God on a yeah. Sunday and, I, yeah. and, and and go and be strengthened and encouraged because we've yeah. got to go out into this world every week mm-hmm. and, and and the attack of the devil. The devil, uh, the senior pastor in our church, Pastor Ron, who, who, who um, back in when I spoke about North Battersley, when I first went there, yeah. he, he spoke to me, um, and he said to me, the attack of the devil is going to be on your life and it will never go away. And it won't because we're we're such a threat to the devil now. He's got to do everything he can to stop us yeah. bringing more souls to the kingdom of mm-hmm. heaven. But mm-hmm. by Christ, we'll overcome that. You and know? It, here we are, yeah. you know. And, and I then went on to, you know, my business grew from strength to strength, which I could share with financial breakthrough. Mm-hmm. Um I've never drank an alcoholic drink ever again. And, You're and what happens? You're completely a new man. Well, you become set free. And yeah. I thank God for the clinics and the alcohol, you know, the steps people you shared with me the other day about those 12, 12 steps. 12 steps, yeah. And the difference between being set free by Jesus and being set free when you go to, you know, the ga- Gamblers Anonymous, alcohol, and all, yeah. all, the, all, the, uh, all the things that the government lay on to help mm-hmm. you is, is that. The temptation never goes away, even mm-hmm. if you turn from it. It's mm-hmm. there and you live with it and it torments you. It's a lifelong battle. Yeah. But when you get set free by Jesus, yeah. it's a lifelong set free. Yeah. You, yeah. I, I can go in any pub. I can go in any restaurant. I can go in any horse race, in any casino. I can go to any area uh, that has got addiction and there's no temptation. Do you know what this You're reminds me of? In the free. Bible, it says, who the sun sets free. It's free indeed. It's free indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. For good. Yeah. That's and amazing, that, and, isn't it? And that's what he's done in my life. And then I then wanted to know what's next. Yeah. And then I committed, I said to my, my pastor, Andrew, has asked me a few times to give him a testimony. And then uh, several weeks ago, I committed to doing it. And, uh, I was there, and I can just say it was amazing. Yeah. I've heard many, 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 many in my life. This was one of the most incredible ones yeah. I've ever heard. Yeah. Ever. And, uh, and uh, again, and maybe for another time, because I know time's pressing. Um, and uh, the Lord revealed the service to me on the way home from Turkey. I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit and I saw what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. And I shared it with two of the pastors. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know what was going to get up when I got up. I was petrified. I couldn't mm-hmm. remember my own name. I was just about to go and share my testimony yep. with four or 500 people. Yep. And it went so well. And the move of God, we had 60 or 70 people come forward. that wanted prayer for, yep. we didn't know what areas of addiction they mm-hmm. had. Mm-hmm. 30 or so people gave their life or rededicated their life to God. And people were getting Hallelujah. healed that yeah. morning as well. Yeah. Healed of all sorts. Healed mm. of sickness, illness, yeah. PTSD, yeah. all sorts. And that's it the, wasn't just it addiction. Was it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. To and think it, I wasn't going to go that morning. Yeah. Could you imagine having yeah. missed out on such a, <laughs> an amazing testimony? Yeah, thank you. So that was God's next, I believe, my next step in my journey. Yeah. And, and I, making that move to give my testimony has now led me the being here and sharing this with you. Yeah, absolutely. And there, there's other things coming up that I'm doing and uh, mm-hmm. giving a couple of words at the men's meeting and uh, on a Tuesday night meeting in, mm-hmm. in the f- next few weeks. And I'm just so excited to see what the yeah. next, uh, uh, the ne- you know, what God's got in store for me in the next yeah. uh, journey, in my journey with him. Yeah. And 
in the next chapter of my life where it's going to lead me with Jesus and I'm on fire for God and just want to sh- I want to share my testimony and I want to share what what God puts on my heart mm-hmm. and uh see where that leads me. I think this is so powerful. I have no words to describe it. It's absolutely amazing from beginning to end, isn't it? Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah. Like the first half of your life looked really one way and the other one was completely the opposite. Yeah. And it's just like the power of God, even as a Christian, okay, yeah. having grown up, let's say a Christian. It's just amazing. Yeah. It, it's just yeah. ama- blows my mind. Like I know I, I, I've i seen a lot of things in my yeah. life. This is amazing. Yeah. Like, because because how, God is so good. Oh. God is so powerful and so amazing. Yeah. If this could happen to you, it could yeah. happen to so many other people. Yeah. It could happen for so many there's more nothing, people. There's nothing different about me, nothing special about me. I just gave my heart to the Lord and opened it and let and him change willing. me. And I was willing. And that and your mum. Yeah. I thank God for her because it, where she kept inviting you yeah. to church and one day you just had to say yes. Yeah. And then it's kind of, you've never really looked back. I've never looked back. And uh, just to, just to finish... For breakthrough with your family, mm. um, I went to church for some years on my own. Mm-hmm. And I was in church six months ago and I was filled with the presence of God. And I looked to my left and uh, I was in tears, floods of tears, tears of joy though. Mm-hmm. And I, I was going for a period with just my mum and my sister. And I looked round and all my children were there saved. And my, and my wife gave her life to Jesus. And that's the prophecy a, makes that, so much sense. That aligned our lives. When you go back to what Robin mm-hmm. said, aligned in your lives. Yeah. And uh, so you brought your family to faith. The power of God is like a ripple effect. It's a roller coaster. Oh my gosh, an entire family. That's huge. Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. And then uh, uh, my my family and then two of my best friends were there saved. And then they start. I started my and uh, my the rest, some of my other family. My brother were all starting to come back to the Lord, and uh, and I. It's just amazing what God can do. It's and, actually amazing, and, isn't and, it? And my my wife and my children giving their lives is just a bigger miracle mm-hmm. as me being set free mm-hmm. from gambling and drinking. Mm-hmm. And I thank God for what he continues to do in my life. And I'll continue to have my my heart, the gates of my heart wide open and, and let him lead me into whatever his calling is for my life. What an incredible story. I've just been so amazingly encouraged by it. Yeah, even thank as a you Christian. For the opportunity to come on and share it. With no, you. thank you, because yeah. I think this is going to touch a lot of people. Yeah. Christians and non Christians. Yeah. Or people struggling with addictions or anything else. Yeah. Um, I don't even have words. This is the third time I've heard this testimony. Yeah. Every time it's such an honor. Like every time it's just amazing. Yeah. Just God, just yeah. God, yeah. isn't it? How he moves. How he moves. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much for coming on and sharing. No, it's been an honor. Thank you. So much. All I have to say is Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah. Jesus Christ is Lord. Uh, thank you, guys. And we'll see you again on the next episode. Thank you.